Hey guys, Ross Mero here, and today I've got a pretty random chill video for you guys. We're just gonna be opening some random packs. So we've got Yu-Gi-Oh! Battle Spirits X Digimon Collaboration Boosters, Dual Masters, a random Pokemon pack, and some Zen and Zart Wafers as well. Today, we're gonna start off with these two Dual Masters boosters, which I've actually been itching to open for a while. So this pack is called Explosive Birth from the Explosive Emperor, Dynabolt, and it is the second pack in the latest series in Duel Masters, known as the Ten King Saga. And the reason why I bought these packs is because it features a really cool and valuable card known as Varivarius, which I'm hoping to get. And other than that, in this brand new series, they've introduced a new rarity called King Master Rare, which looks really awesome. So I've had my eye on collecting the different King Master Rares for a while now, so this is where I start. Some of you guys might find this card back nostalgic and familiar if you were basically in the same generation as me and played Duel Masters in English when you were younger. You'll notice that most of these new Duel Masters cards, they have this mark on the top right. That's because in these 10 King Saga, the lore is that the Duel Masters world has been divided into 10 kingdoms which are ruled over by 10 kings respectively. And this mark basically indicates which kingdom these cards belong to. So this first card belongs to the Onifuda kingdom which is currently the main rival slash villain. Okay, and this one is Team Wave, one of the protagonists, Nature and Water, followed by Team Bomber, another protagonist team. This is Light and Fire, so all of the kingdoms are basically two colors combined into a single multicolor kind of race. And what is this? Oh, okay, we actually managed to end up getting a foil, a very rare, and it's for Team Joker, the main character, which is a combination of nature and fire. So this is the Candy Princess Sweets, and she has the races Jokers, Team Kirifuda, and Specials, which, okay, those of you guys who know nothing about Duel Masters and or rather have not played Duel Masters for so many years Rory are probably like just wrecking your hits over the words I've just spoken. But it's okay, you guys don't need to understand it that much. Of course, if you're interested, I definitely recommend checking out the Duel Masters wiki for all the latest information. But basically, uh, this main character archetype Team Kirifuda kind of revolves around the various legends or fairy tales around the world. So I'm assuming this creature's inspiration comes from somewhere around there as well. I'm not too sure. Willy Wonka? I guess not. She is a double breaker and when she's placed in the battle zone or when she attacks, you can place the top card of your deck in your mana zone and after that, destroy all of your opponent's creatures with the same card as that card. Wait a minute, that's pretty intense! She also has Kiri Fudesh, Red Green 3 and basically in the 10 King Saga, each kingdom has their own like signature mechanic or ability which most of its uh, ace monsters have. As for the Kiri Fudesh ability, after your creature attacks, if it broke a shield during that attack, you can summon this card from the hand for its Kirifu Dash cost, which in this case would be red, green or fire and nature 3 cost. So you realize that it's much cheaper than its actual cost of 6 and this allows you to go really aggro in that sense. But of course it's possible for your opponent to counter your Kirifu Dash by basically blocking your attacks, making sure you don't break any shields and so in doing so you won't be able to Kirifu Dash. So very interesting, we actually managed to pull a foil. I honestly was not expecting that and here we have Glory Hammer which is for Team Ginga, the final team. Of the, pro of the main four protagonists, and it is blue, uh, water, and light. Now let's open our second pack. Alright, so we've already kind of beaten the odds by pulling, uh, wait a minute, why is this card sparkly? And anyway, starting off we have, <laughs> okay, for these Team Ginga cards, I'm definitely gonna read their names because they're all in like English. Solo Trooper, <laughs> very cool, and wait a minute, is this some kind of special pack? Why are all the cards shining? Invisible Spy? Huh? Prismatic Vision? Followed by... Moon... Moon Ultra Gardener? Wait a minute... Oh! King Master Rare! Oh, does this mean when you pull a King Master, basically all the other cards in the pack are of the same uh, kingdom, uh, aka or team, and kind of have some special foiling? That is so cool, but are you guys looking at this right now? This is the current trump card for Team Ginga. I am justice if you want. That is literally his name. So his races are Metallica and Team Ginga. So, 
Stuff old Duel Masters players would definitely not understand. He possesses the Galax Shield ability, where basically by paying 6 yellow and blue cost, you can place this card from your hand face up as a new shield in your shield zone. And all creatures with Galax Shield also have this effect at the start of your turn. If this creature is currently a face up shield in your shield zone, you can summon it onto the battle zone at no cost. So essentially, Although it took one turn to get into the field, you're essentially summoning it for less than its original cost. During your opponent's turn, while this card is face up in your shield zone, all of your shield cards that are added to your hand gain the shield trigger ability. Which means, well, basically all of your shields become shield triggers when you have this guy as Galax Shield. It's a triple breaker and it cannot be attacked or blocked. Now that is a really intense card, man. Dude, I can't believe we literally just pulled a King Master Rare and a very rare in two random packs that I picked out like a few weeks ago. But with that, uh, let's move away from Dual Masters. Next, let's open these Battle Spirits Digimon Last Evolution packs. And I basically got these packs as a bonus for buying uh, one of the late, uh, the orange, the first booster with the first booster box in the digital brand new Digimon card game uh, back in April. And the, basically, the shop that I bought the box from was nice enough to give me these cards as a bonus. Digivice, Pumpmon. Etimon, Fladramon, looking really cool. This is definitely one of my favorite Digimon from Zero Two. Ooh, May Crackmon, Vicious Mo, nice. I really like this brand new Digimon from Tri. Followed by Wizardmon, and that is just a rare. Okay, so nothing there. Second pack. I'm honestly not expecting much, but it'd be pretty intense if we pull some kind of like X rare. Master Rare, I guess I wouldn't be too high because Master Rares in Battle Spirits kind of basically just look like normal rare. Shellmon, so nostalgic. Digivice, Birdramon 2, Kabuterimon 2. Oh, Karamon! Ah, it's just a rare even though it looks so cool. Alright, so nothing too fancy. Okay, let's leave Yu-Gi-Oh for a second last and now open this random pack that I have from the Pokemon XY Brick era. I think I bought it because I was after the shiny red Gyarados GX. Wait, what, is it GX during this era? I think it's EX. Yeah, I think it's just EX during this era and I love the red Gyarados, man. Back from the whole crystal, uh, Perugly, Drowsy, Suicune. Wow! So wait, is this a foil? Well, it's just a rare. But I don't think you're guaranteed rares in a Pokemon pack, so I guess you're pretty lucky already. Yeah, I think in Japanese Pokemon packs, the max you can get is un you're, you're guaranteed uncommons but not rares. And anyway, on to Yu Gi Oh! Arc 5. We're literally going back in time now to Premium Pack 18, a really old pack. So the reason why I'm opening these really old packs is really for numbers hunting because this pack contains many numbers that I don't quite have yet. Just like this one over here, number 35, Ravenous Tarantula. Very nice, but the one that we're going for is number 77, the 7 Sins. And I am super hoping to get it in Secret Rare because all the premium pack cards, you can get all of them in either Common or Secret. And every pack, you get one Secret. Okay, and in our first one is going to be the Phantom Knights Shade Brigandine. Alright, not too shabby. I wouldn't I don't mind uh, Phantom Knights as my foil. Second pack. Oh and here it is! Number 77, the seven sins. And just look at how cool that freaking spider is. If only it was a foil. Okay, now let's see what foil we get in this set. Ooh, number 37 too, nice. Spider Shark, I also don't have this one because I don't think it's been reprinted in the Japanese game yet and Moonstar is going to be our secret. And finally, we're gonna open some Zenonzard Wafer Code 01. And for this, we better prepare some plates because I don't want to dirty my playmat. And why am I opening these? Uh, those of you guys who are new to the channel or don't know, Zenonzard is a mobile digital card game that you can currently play on your smartphone in both English and Japanese. So of course, there are no physical cards, but they did make some in order to release together with these wafers as a kind of like collectible uh, gimmick. And as a very big fan of Zen and Zard, I simply could not resist. And on another note, the wafers are actually pretty nice. Now let's see, okay, okay. Now this card back means that the card we've got is a minion card, or uh, alright, not a minion exactly, but an actual, a playable Zen and Zard card, and it is... Oh, a legend! And 
this is the hero, Ella Do the Gel. Those of you guys who play Zenonzer might have encountered her in the game already. She's pretty anti-meta and probably always will be. When summoned, destroy all of your opponents, cost 8 or higher minions. So instantly getting rid of your opponents, mightiest boss monsters at only 5 cost. So very strong tech to put in no matter the era. I've opened quite a few of these in the past and the highest rarity card I've gotten is an epic, which is the second highest. So really awesome to pull a legend right here. Although it's sealed in plastic and the plastic is kind of covered in wafer crumbs. So I'm gonna avoid that for now and see what's in our Second pack, very nice. Another actual card because uh, other than these cards, you can also get like a Codeman card, which is basically just kind of like a fan service kind of thing. And it is a sick two legends in a row. And here we have Kiska, the destroyer of dreams. When summoned, discard the top five cards of your deck. And during your turn, whenever cards from your deck are destroyed, if from among them, there is a card with a when destroyed effect, you may activate it. However, if multiple cards with a when destroyed effect are discarded, only activate the first one and this effect does not stack. Very nice, but actually not too strong in the current meta, so that's a bit of a shame, but still very cool to get a legend. So just to sum things up, these are my spoils from today's random pack opening. Let me know if you guys would like to see me do more of these and I hope to see you guys in the next card game video.